Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Lahari here from Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, and this is a lecture on trauma to teeth and facial skeleton. Let's now look at trauma, which is a major part, and imaging plays a major part in it for diagnostic evaluation of a patient with trauma to teeth and jaws. The applied radiology aspect for any patient who is um, a case of trauma is to first of all to develop prioritized treatment plan based on severity of the trauma, next to determine the presence of life-threatening injuries, to provide essential information about presence, location and orientation of fracture planes and fragments, also adjacent vital anatomical structures, foreign bodies that may be embedded in soft tissue and to monitor healing and detection of long-term changes due to trauma by taking post-therapeutic images. When we're talking about dento-alveolar trauma, it can happen to all uh, persons of all age groups. The causes could be uh, ranging from contact sport, violence, falls, motor vehicle accidents, uh, to children having trauma to the dento-alveolar structures uh, due to playground activities or even child abuse. Now, these are some images of how dento-alveolar trauma looks like, right, right from evulsion of teeth to uh, tooth fractures and alveolar fractures and also soft tissue trauma. <clears throat> the choice of imaging in cases of dentoalveolar trauma um, should start off with the, it should depend on severity and the area of involvement. Intraoral images are the first choice and having the best resolution and specially used to detect coronal and root fractures, displacement of tooth from its socket. Root fractures to periomycal images at two different horizontal angulations would be very uh, useful. Uh, also, images of teeth of opposing arch should be done just to rule out fracture of the opposing arch. Uh, soft tissues like lips and cheeks, if there is any potential foreign bodies embedded be due to a fall, um, you could have mud or sand or even a tooth that is uh, um, displaced and injured, a fragment which is uh, embedded within this soft tissue. Panoramic imaging is used to examine broad anatomical structure. Uh, it helps us to visualize dentoalveolar injuries, especially mandibular fractures. CBCT, especially a small uh, field of view, CBCT provides high resolution and multiplanar imaging, especially for fractures of teeth and alveolar process. Uh, chest or abdominal imaging may be required in cases of accidental aspiration or ingestion of a tooth or a foreign body or a fragment. <clears throat> Radiologic signs of fracture of tooth or bone would be number one, the presence of one or two usually sharply defined radiolucent lines within the anatomic boundaries of a fracture, a change in the normal anatomical outline or shape of the structure, a loss of continuity of outer border and appearance of step type of defect, an increase in the radio opacity of structure and doubly radio opaque uh, areas. So if you were to look at the classification of dentoalveolar injuries, dental fractures if, could be a crown fra infraction, crown fracture uncomplicated, crown fracture complicated, fracture of enamel dentine cementum uncomplicated, fracture of enamel dentine cementum complicated, and root fracture. Periodontal tissue injuries could be concussion, subluxation, and luxation. Injuries to supporting bone could be due to communi comminution of alveolar bone, single wall alveolar fracture, fracture of alveolar process, and fracture of maxilla or the mandible. This is a diagrammatic representation of how crown fractures look like. This is infraction which just involves the uh, enamel only. These are uncomplicated fractures involving only enamel, enamel and dentine, or a complicated fracture where pulp is involved. Um, crown root fractures can be uncomplicated or could be complicated with involvement of the pulp and larger portion of the tooth and root. Root fractures per se could be involving the cervical one-third, middle one-third or apical one-third of the root. Moving on, luxation without displacement uh, could be a minor movement of the tooth within the socket leading to concussion or subluxation uh, where again there's minor movement of the jaw with, and the widening of PDL space happens. Luxation with displacement involves extrusive luxation where the tooth, you can see wider part of the PDL um, widened. 
uh, or the tooth is luxated in a lateral position or there is displacement or it is intruded or totally avulsed which is called as avulsion. This is example of horizontal root fractures. Here you can see a middle third fracture, oblique fracture, which is also horizontal fracture. Again, a middle fra third fracture of the root. Vertical fractures, again, have poor prognosis. This could be due to a lot of stress uh, in this fate-bearing tooth uh, and root canal treated tooth. Here you can see a vertical fracture. This is also a vertical fracture, the entire root, and this is a crown root vertical fracture. Periodontal tissues injuries could be a uh, concussion, subluxation, luxation and evulsion. Concussion leading to vascular injuries and internal resorption are seen in this image here. You can see a large internal resorption defect within the uh, pulp as well as a concussion defect. Also, it can lead to widening of pedial space. Luxation can lead to the entire dislocation of tooth from its socket and extrusion. Alveolar process per se when it sustains injury. These are some images to show you how the teeth are displaced and the entire fragment of the anterior part of the uh, jaw could be displaced. Um, <clears throat> this is just to show you a diagrammatic representation of the different types of alveolar process fractures. This is again a classification of alveolar process fractures. Um, you can go through this article for detailed management. Um, uh, more about dental alveolar fractures and uh, mandibular fractures would be dealt in detail in under the oral surgery uh, trauma aspect. So this is an example of mandibular fracture and a panoramic view showing you the fracture uh, involving the uh, angle and as well as parasymphysis region fractures. These are again examples of various uh, extent of mandibular fractures. You will see the radiolucent line um, which is involving the tooth in the body or multiple uh, radiolucent lines are seen in this first image here. More examples, more and more complicated examples of mandibular fracture where an entire fragment has fractured and multiple bone um, uh, areas of bone are fractured. Also CT image showing you areas of fracture of the mandible. Condylar fractures um, and uh, body of man angle of uh, mandible fracture is seen in this conventional uh, uh, skull image which is a reverse down view and there are various classification of fractures uh, based on the displacement of the condylar head and the neck. Um, again, like I told you, this is beyond the details of which are beyond the scope of this lecture. You will have to uh, look at oral surgery lectures which deal with fractures in detail. Maxillary fractures is an example of a blowout fracture of the orbital floor where you can see the floor is uh, multiple areas of fracture. And this is a jug handle view which is also called as a submento vertex view which is showing you a zygomatic arch fracture compared to the normal right side, the left side is fractured. Lastly, pathologic fractures uh, which is a terminology used for fractures that happen due to a large cystic lesion leading to um, which is extending to for example here in this case to the floor of the um, to the lower border of the mandible and fracturing the jaw because of the extent of the cystic area involved. So that brings me to the end of this chapter. Um, I would want you to do further reading from the textbook references provided here as well as the references within the uh, lecture notes itself on the slides. Um, and uh, if you do have any doubts, kindly feel free to write back to me. Thank you.